Thank you for tuning in to the Motorcycle Mechanics Podcast, Episode 4, filmed November 1st, 2022. this in a while we've been pretty busy between the both of us and figured we'd try to kick this thing off again round well it's the fourth episode isn't it technically yeah it's our, yeah it's our fourth episode so it's been so long my hair got gray since the last time we did it yeah that's happened. right that's right it got gray so how you doing johnny doing good doing good it was up to almost 70 today here so it was a nice day that's crazy because it was like 60 something here today yeah it's been yeah. It, abnormally warm yeah you know it's my uh absolute worst time of the year which is taking care of leaves in the yard along with i haven't cut grass in 16 years i haven't raked leaves in 16 years so i was kind of over that you know but uh most of them are dropped now and i'll probably just mulch them up with a mower and let them go call it good yeah, that's how I like it. To, that, that's how I like to do it. But Shan like wants me to move the leaves, so that requires a leaf blower, right? So, yeah. Luckily, I got one of those for nothing, and yeah. um, I rebuilt the engine on it, and just this little two stroke, and bada bing, bada boom. Wow, three awesome. leaf blower. It's like a, it's one of those um. What is it? Ryobi? Is it the green? The green? Yeah. Ryo- yeah, it's a Ryobi, but it's like a backpack blower. Oh, wow. Yeah. So it blows really good. You just, and it locks, throttle locks. So you just blow along and pile the leaves up. We have a bunch of maples and stuff. So it gets crazy. Because what I usually do to- is I mulch it. Huh? Can you just blow it to the back of your property and be done? That's what I do. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just blow it right to the back and yeah. uh, just be done with it. My wife likes it clean, and I usually just mulch it and just throw it into like you know the flower beds and stuff. And then that, but the problem is next spring I'm the one pulling them, like hauling the leave piles that she pulls out. So now I just blow them out back and right. one last step in the spring for me. So first house thirty years ago, you could blow them all to the edge of the road, and the city came with a big truck and sucked them all up for you for free. And None of the other cities around here do that now, but man, that would have been awesome to do that. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I just throw it in the backyard. That's all right. done. Yeah. Yeah. It was nice. It was a good deal. I think it's like probably a $400 leaf pack, you know? Wow. That's awesome. Yeah. The guy, <clears throat> it's funny how it worked was the guy that had it before me ran it without two stroke oil. Oh boy. He's like, it was running really good. And then it just stopped running. (laughs) I bet. And so I fixed it for him. Kind of, I, it was seized. So I unseized it and kind of like limped it along and it blew on him. And, but it, it made it do one more like leaf for him and leaf pass. And he's like, I don't want it. I don't want to deal with it. You can have it. So I took it and I just, I was like, okay, what is going on with this thing? And uh, yeah, I just put a new, rings and just some sandpaper on the cylinder wall and wow. they're back up <laughs> and it runs it works it works it makes a little bit of a little bit of a rattle when it's at idle but that's fine it runs really good we put we've run it two more seasons and he borrows it every year so it's not like he got right. out of it so he still borrows it every year so. so it's justified, you're saying? Yeah, yeah, it's justified. I use it to like, <laughs> I use it so like when I'm having my big parties and I need a little bit more air to get the fire bigger. You yeah. can put that puppy down. I did, and that. I, I did that with my Makita 18 volt the other day. I could not believe the difference. I went, okay, this is the coolest thing ever. Yeah, yeah. It's got like really wet wood that like won't yeah. burn. It burns when you throw a, a leaf blower in, into the fire. Yeah. Anything Thank goodness burns. we didn't have that at Death Rose a few years yeah. ago. Oh, I know with the fu- yeah, <laughs> I know with that <laughs> with that snowblower. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah, that I took. I've been good. I took that out. I had to service that. 
That didn't yeah. start. You need a plug. Tube went, and they put a new tube in it. But yeah, no snow yet. Wow. Not we haven't even had one flurry yet. We usually oh. have at least one flurry by now. Man, it's that's great this year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you can just stay out of Vermont. Apparently, you took the winter with you. That's right, man. I just, you know, the temperature drops into the fifties, and I'm freezing, and I'm like, how can I be freezing? This is nothing. So it's hard to adapt to it. Mm-hmm. But this will be my second full winter. You know, when you lived in Vermont, people would say, how long you've been here? And you would measure it by how many winters you survived, not how many years you've been there. Right. So this is our second full winter and I'm ready. So. Yeah. You're ready to be able to take a motorcycle ride on Christmas day. If you want to. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Hopefully I've got the SR in storage and the triple still here and trying to decide when I take that over to put mm-hmm. it in storage just to have more room in the shop. But. Yep. We'll see. It's funny, the temperature changes, and now I've got this urge to start working on stuff and tinkering on stuff besides wood splinters. And um, it's, yeah. I got a run on stuff the other day. We can get into it later, but you know, it seemed like everything I worked on worked within a matter of a little bit of time, and I thought, oh, man, this is going really good. So Right. That just means you have to go write it. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's what it means. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I sent you some pictures to kind of describe it later on, but um, mm-hmm. at least I had something that I could talk about that I worked on rather than no, nothing for me. Yeah. So, I think we've, we've, we both have a lot of stuff to work, have been working on. So, yeah. You know, you teased me with the GS 1000 and then reality kicked in the other day when you told me about it. So I lost that desire real fast. So <laughs> what what reality is that what you said it was worth and then what you got hits on the other day i was like oh oh well i'm interested in that oh no i'm not <laughs> yeah yeah i will i was just like just throwing the rock you know line out there i was like ah 3500 let's see what happens oh, two hits and then um, i i've said it i'm like well my buddy that lives in kentucky put a put a deposit down on it so he's <laughs> saying he's gonna come by in the spring maybe to pick it up so i'm like i gotta hold on to it yeah the truth is is i went for like a hundred mile ride the other day and i just did not want to get off of it wow you know i bet you know, man how can you uh, how can you say no to this it's not there there it yeah. is oh man look at that that was the other day yeah that looks great yeah yeah i i'm impressed with myself that yeah. i made it look it look that good yeah. i was like we, huh i i didn't know that you got it you must have gotten it before we ended episode three so mm-hmm. i didn't even know about that you were working on the gold wing last time yeah well so the five so that was for listed for trade on facebook messenger or facebook marketplace and uh guys like i need a smaller bike this bike is just too much power i'm like okay and john it was bad like we traded and i rode it home it had no front brakes the clutch what did you trade for it the gs 500 550 oh i thought you still had that okay wow oh oh i even traded so oh man you know that's sweet but i mean you know what I was in for the 554. It wasn't much. And right. so I was like, okay. And the 1000 is a desirable bike. It's a shafty, but man, right. it hauls, man. It is. Well, you got kids slow. now. You're considered an old shafty. That's so, right. Like I'm an old shafty now. That's yeah. right. You can talk to a whole different group of guys on the GS forum now. Cause you, I know. Shaft, so. <laughs> I mean, a, a, a good chunk of my, of my fleet, my herd is shafty now. So uh, like, it's know. so sad. <laughs> <laughs> it's so sad. <laughs> so yeah. I mean I, I've got a I've got a clutch problem with it. Um I think it's the clutch springs, you know? Yeah. Just like like your old 750, like you know, you just give it to it and it just starts to slip, but you know, yeah. I gotta be moving to right. for it to slip. But uh well, with the shaft, you're supposed to be under 3,500 RPM anyway. Yeah, so. that's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's something else. Mm-hmm. Man. So uh, that's, I've been riding that a lot. The Bonneville's fixed. Riding that. 
Uh, the exhaust blew out on the gold wing. Wow. So I've been trying to mend that. I think I figured it out. I'm using the old Bonneville T120 mufflers. Finally found a purpose for those. Yeah. Because I was like, oh, yeah, I'll make it sound like a you know straight pipe, the hot gold wing. First off, never straight pipe a gold wing. <laughs> because A, it's not classy. And B, you are in a set air bubble in that thing. So yeah. all the noise of the exhaust is all you hear. You don't hear any wind noise or anything. It just sounds like, you know, I don't know, like what, like a $500 car you hear going down the road. I was going to say a small no four cylinder car with a yeah. muffler off. Of it. <laughs> so, so I've been trying to figure that out because, you know, I'm, I'm trying not to spend money on that bike. Like I'm just like trying to fix it with parts on hand. So yeah. I, I think I've got it pretty well fixed. I'm going to go for a test ride probably tomorrow. Um, a little longer right and then what else going on i got the monkey oh um i uh got a ninja 250 oh wow yes Man. um fair price um and uh i'm probably it's like no fairing this thing has been dropped every single way but ride straight suspension's good engine's good starts and runs and goes uh believe it has 6000 miles and uh yeah so i'm probably going to do i'm thinking like making some kind of scrambler or something cuz i was half thinking of like reaching out to state steve case and see if he had still had that ascot because i was like yeah. that'd be kind of fun cuz i kind of want an on road off road kind of buggy uh so i can put like chinko 705 you know 2080 tires on and uh so I just like, ah, and I had that, I bought that little Honda CM 185 twin star, which now 12 volt conversion runs, put rebel parts in it. That thing takes a lot of rebel parts, by the way, Wow! but it's not fast. Like it pick up, it's, it just goes 60, 65. That's all it's got, you know? Wow. So, so I was like, I need something bigger. And then my buddy's selling his Ninja. So that's what I'm looking at right now. Wow. So that's what I've got. That's one. Six or seven bikes I've got right now in the stable. Mm. Too many. I'm up to five and three of them are projects. So I still got to do something. Well, are they, they roll? Um, Yeah. The trail 70 rolls without a motor in it, but it rolls. (laughs) Um, But I haven't done anything to the 500 interceptor at all, other than put it on the lift, take it off the lift, put it in the corner and put this Hodaka up there, but uh, uh, our buddy Bob wants the Trail 70 really bad, and I teased him by saying, let's trade for the TW200, and uh, the challenge is, can I get him out of the state of Vermont to meet me halfway to do the trade? That's I really don't care about the trade. I just want to see if I can get him out of the state of Vermont. So right. I think the state will implode on itself when he leaves, but I think you know they won't be able to handle it without him, but uh, of course not. It it would be cool to get him to meet up with him, and uh, so I got him all worked up when I suggested it the other day. Yeah, I think it's in the state constitution that like Bob, like you know, Bob can't leave. Like, no, I, I, no, I, I can't. I, I think it's just there's too much going on, and he needs to stay here. Yeah, you know. Yeah, that's right. Uh, I found I found a picture down in Gatlinburg that said Bob was here, and I took a picture of it, and some local guy named Bob that was. Bob was here and he'll do something to you if you mess up the, you know, the parks or whatever. And I did a little video and said, this is just fake news because Bob was never here. So, (laughs) Uh, yeah. Is he actually interested in trading? Oh yeah. He's asked me for the trail 70 ever since I met him. So, um, but I haven't done anything to it, you know, other than start it and take it apart. So it's just always been, the The conversation to talk about constantly you know so it's good but it would go to a good home if i did that but the grandkids are getting older to where a couple of the older ones that would be cool if i could teach them how to ride a motorcycle on a tw200 rather than a little trail 70 even though it has a clutch Mm -hmm. and um so they've got some acreage to ride on so it would be cool to get it for that but yep we'll we'll see i don't know so talk about the Hondaka. You have a picture of it there. 
it's a uh, my yes. um sharing screen sharing screen my uh new mechanic buddy bob that the other bob that's here uh, yeah. this was in his trailer he does a lot of flat track repairs and he rides trials bikes and stuff mm -hmm. and he's an excellent mechanic and knowledgeable and it's just a place to go hang out and see what he's working on so he took me back in his trailer to show me a uh, honda xr 500 flat track frame and i was all excited thinking i can make a street tracker out of it well it turns out it's an actual racing frame and huh. it wouldn't work so this was sitting next to it and i'm like when did you get this he said well this is stan's bike I'm supposed to work on it. I don't have time. I said, well, I'll work on that thing. And I said, what's it need? He said, it just needs the fenders put on new handlebars, cables and everything assembled and then test it out and get it running. <laughs> and I was so excited to work on it. I, you know, kind of volunteered. So it turned out I rode motocross with Stan back in the seventies and it was neat to reconnect with him. So he bought it basically 90% restored with a box full of parts. So um, I'm putting it all together and it was, it's just a simple, it's a 74 125 and it's called a super combat wombat is what they call it. <laughs> but it's a model 97 in uh, they're worth a ton of money. Uh, I was really surprised to find parts. There's a, a guy named Terry in Missouri. That's uh Hodaka USA.com. I think it's called. And they have a booming business of selling, you know, reproduction or new parts mm -hmm. to people when they restart store them. They claim this thing could bring four thousand dollars when it's done. It just blew me away. Hmm. And uh, you know, it was pretty competitive in the early 70s. It's a 74. And then when Japanese came over with the TM and the YZ and stuff, it really wasn't as competitive, but it's a excellent vintage racing bike you know, just for the, the ability to, to ride it and it's simple and stuff. But um, yeah. I guess it's got a Japanese motor and then they were assembled in, I think, Iowa or Idaho. It's called Pepco mm -hmm. Pacific, Pacific something builders that uh, stopped building, I think, in 60 or um, maybe 74 or 77, something like that. They just kind of, you know, folded, but they have a, a big following. So it nice. ought to be pretty exciting um, to Does, get this going. Have you got it running? No, I was getting ready to. I, I was doing little by little, you know, the, the Petcocks. He supplied me some parts. They were wrong. So I had to turn around and buy more parts, and they're coming in this week. Mm. But um, it, it should start right up. I guess it was rebuilt. I don't know if it was bored or just new rings. Mm -hmm. I don't know if the, the crank bearings or seals are new, but it, it looks brand new. Yeah. And, uh, but believe it or not, I've got to find some decent two stroke oil in town so I can mix up a gallon and try it. So, yeah. Uh, it's got a pretty cool, that's not the pipe for it on the bottom. It's got a pretty cool down pipe that goes out the other side. I can see but, the diameter of it. It's pretty big. Yeah. yeah. A big expansion chamber I can see here. Yeah. It's really neat looking. So, so, so I'm excited about that. It's a it's a strictly race bike then. Yeah, they did make enduros that you could ride on the road. I think for a small time they they had names like Super Rat and Road Toad, and there was another one. Uh, they even had a 250 that was green. Mm -hmm. uh, that there might even have been a 175. I can't remember, but I don't know if you can tell or not. The shocks are moved forward, and if you get real close you can see where the old shock mounts were in the back so somebody has modified this it's got quite a bit more rear clearance travel oh. than it did from the factory because the front is like five or six inches so the back would have been five or six inches which would have been what a 74 had back then yeah so about the the only thing it needs is a seat cover it's got some splits in the top but it would be fairly simple to change out yep so that, I'm sure you could find someone that could reupholster it or get one of those kits that just. Yeah, I could do it if I had the kit. I think you got to clip the metal clips over on the frame and the back, you know, or the, the metal case. But we'll see how far he wants to go with it. Uh, nice. 
I'm just going to look uh, through these pictures. What? So why do you have a four wheeler? Well, this is my uh, grandkids, and uh, uh, this was more of a challenge because my son-in-law uh, couldn't get it running, and I said, "I'll get that running in no time." Is that a Foreman? It, it's a, a Recon 250. It's so a uh, 2007. Okay. So I was joking with him and said, "You know, is it getting gas? Does it have fire? Does it have compression? Is the air filter clogged?" And it, he was like. I'm having trouble keeping it running. So this was when I was in Vermont trying to tell him what to do. And I thought he bought a Chinese carburetor to put on it. Mm -hmm. And when I came down, they're wanting to fix it up for my granddaughter also in, in the younger uh, or the older grandsons in, um, yep. um, they, um, she's been after him to get it going. So it's been what I've been here in the house for a year, but it's been a year and a half. I kept saying I was going to do it. So I borrowed a trailer and brought it over. And the first thing I did was pull the fuel line off and no fuel was coming out, even though it had old gas in it. So I mm -hmm. put my IV bottle on it and a brand new battery that I had there and it started right up. <laughs> really? Yeah. I mean, it sounded good and I'm laughing. So I don't know if it'll show or not in here when you get back, but. Uh, yeah, I'll take a look. So if you look at the the pet the, the white, it's yeah. just packed solid. Nothing was coming out. So and there was a lot of water in the tank, even though it was plastic. So I cleaned it out and uh, ordered a new petcock, and that came in. So I'll probably start this up tomorrow. Get rid of it. Give yeah. it back. It is. Give it back to him. Yeah, I got a couple other things to to do on it. But I was looking on YouTube checking certain things out, the rear brakes and oil changes just before I jumped into it. And mm -hmm. uh, there's a big following for these things. I guess it's a really good beginner quad being a 250. And they've made the same one, I guess, since mid nineties, all the way up till now, they've only made a couple of changes. So yep. I'm sure it's a rock solid motor. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a Honda, right? Yeah. But the, uh, the other two I worked on, I don't know if you had the pictures up there, was the lovely Yamaha golf cart. All right, hold on. Yep. Look yep, at that. There thing. it is. Is it electric or is it gas? It's gas. So I said, I'm sure the carburetor's gummed up in it. And uh, it's also with my daughter's family. So I got the trailer and brought that home and then went back and got the quad and brought it home and I got the quad or the got the golf cart running in about an hour and got the quad running later on that day. And I thought I'm on a roll, but um, <laughs> it's really weird because you turn the key on the minute you touch the gas an electric motor starts turning. And then that's the electric motor is what starts, I guess the gas engine and then it goes. So it like lunges, you know, I don't play golf, so I don't know anything about it. It kind of lunges forward and you really got to watch it. But um uh, it was pretty simple. I don't know how big the motor is, if it's a 125 or 250, but I just took the bowl off and sprayed carb cleaner all in it without taking it completely apart. And uh, the plug was all fouled. And uh, the battery's got like an actual car battery in it. And it was just laying on a plate. I mean, and they've got a bumpy road they live on. If I would have given it to them, the battery would have just fell over and destroyed everything. But yeah, it was a lot of fun getting it going. And making loops around the house and almost feeling like a four wheeler, but it ran really good. Uh, I'm sure it's got old gas in it and I didn't have time to drain it out. So I put stabilizer in my gas and put it in there and said, it just needs to be run and get it out. But yep. I'm sure the gas in it will last two years. I'm sure it doesn't use any gas, but uh, it was pretty cool. But the ignition, you put the key in, you know, say between your legs on that white part of the dash there. Mm -hmm. And, uh, underneath your legs. And then when I got done running the yard, I looked down and the key was on the floorboard. It just pops out of the ignition. So it still said, runs. It still runs. Yeah. So I said, we got to come up with some kind of safety chain. So the key stays on it. It'll be gone in no time. So, and then the other picture I sent you uh, of Ryan trimming trees, that was my whole line of, well, um, uh, from the, the people we got the golf cart from, they had a steel, weed eater pole chainsaw yeah 
uh, steel brand. And I think that goes out like 16, 18 feet. So yeah. this big branch to the, to the left there was sticking out over my neighbor's land or over the house and a widow lady next door. And I was really concerned this tree was going to go right through her house. Yeah. And you never know with insurance, if it's act of God, if it's my fault or her fault. So right. there's my Marine up on the roof, <laughs> taking care of all of it. I took that picture and it's a pretty epic picture. And, uh, and those pole saws are not easy to use. No. And it's really heavy. So I put a new chain on it. It cut right through it. But what was funny is the limb that he was cutting yeah. And I, I'm not going to share the video because everybody would freak out, but it turns, you know, those head massage wire things you could put over your head that yeah. shows cat video. Well, that thing turned south and fell right on top of him, just like a big old massager and scratched the back of his neck a little bit. And everybody, somebody put on Facebook and everybody's like, well, that's about four OSHA violations right there. Yeah. No yeah. hard hat, no glasses, no gloves. Just go for it. Right. But he got it all down, and there's me and Morgan on the ground just kind of watching watching and videoing like a good parent, you know, should, <laughs> hoping to make $20,000 off of funniest videos or something. Right, but, right. But we got it all done, and that was that was a big relief to not worry about that. That's funny. Yeah, we yeah. did the – I did the branch in front of my house on my big maple, and I was on top of my roof, and that – we used a pole saw. I rented one, and – yeah. Yeah, that was sketchy. You know, we had the limb itself. The main limb was probably, you know, mm -hmm. 12 inches in diameter, 14 inches. When it fell, you could feel it through the ground, through the house. Because I was on yeah, the roof. Yeah, Dev said that because our house is right to the left of that. And that, you know, sloping branch went up. I got it clear from her house. And then I used the pole saw to cut it. And it was probably six feet long. And she felt it in the house when it hit. Yeah. It's a big thump. So yeah, but it's gone now. Yeah, it's gone. I got a bunch of limbs and I took all the brush and the limbs up the street to the landscaper that redoes them, you know, or or uh, mulches, mulches them. them. But I have what's left that I could give to somebody for firewood or our fire pit or something. But mm -hmm. um, it was good. So yeah, I got bonus points from the lady next door taking care of it for. Her. But so. This is just a suggestion. I've got that SR250, and uh, I saw this online the other day, and I think this is what I'm going to try and go toward. Mm -hmm. um, I won't have the same tank, but, you know, I may go for that kind of look on it rather than what I had. Yeah. Uh, I still haven't heard it run, so. But so you're going. All, all new inside. So you're going for like a, a scrambler kind of look? Yeah. Yeah. So it looks more like, you know, what we would call the special or L model right now. So mm -hmm. hopefully when I make a new seat and raise the tank up in the back, it'll mm -hmm. look like that. And I have a couple of fenders I can chop up. So I don't know. What? Um, are, how quick are those 250s? I don't think they're real fast. Um, they're a bulletproof motor too, but I'm on the Facebook group and I've heard guys say something about, you know, 90 mile an hour or whatever, but. It's pretty quick for a single 250. Yeah. 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 So I don't know if Craig did different gearing to it or not. Uh, I can't remember what he said, but, mm -hmm. um, you know, modify it a little bit. And should be a nice bike to tinker around on with all of our back roads. Right. And the interceptor. What's your, what's your deal with that? Uh, still waiting on a title for my New York buddies. Uh so they found it the other day, but with Kentucky being that it's got to be a notarized signed title. Right. He got it from a guy and just signed the back. And then the guy that signed it, signed it with a different street address of what's labeled on the front. So that's going to mess New York up. So your yep. name was brought up in the middle of it the other day. And I said, nah, I don't want to get Justin involved just yet. <laughs> yeah. So Send it to uh, Justin, get it registered. <laughs> so, you know, it's just crazy down here that you have to have a notarized signature to buy anything. And so Sam said that he was going to put it in his name in New York and then notarize it and send it to me. So I probably won't license it here. I'll probably just resell it. Uh, I'm going to try it. So I had it all prepared for this old chef 
GS 1000, but that deal fell through. So I, I really <laughs> couldn't do anything with that. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know if I'm going to be getting rid of that GS 1000. It's, yeah. it's a tough one. It's a, I bet it's a gem. Yeah. I went to a uh, flat track race the other day. Yeah. Uh, Bob's in the Bob here in, in Kentucky is involved in uh, his uh, grandson races and stuff, but a lot of Hondas and KTMs and Yamahas, and it's the 450 and below, but pretty tight little flat track. And, you know, one of them's like 15 minutes from the house. Didn't even know it was there. And the big shots from AT or AFT, is that what it is? American fly track. Mm -hmm. uh, several of those guys showed up and raced in it. So it was like watching the big boys run, but it was pretty fascinating. You know, I mean, it was quads and minis and then the bigger bikes. I mean, it wasn't, you know, big Harleys or Indians or anything like that, but mm -hmm. uh, it was pretty fascinating to watch that. And uh, he was trying to get me involved. I'm like, no, I'm good. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, yeah, so what have you been working on? Oh, everything and anything. Like I said, I'm trying to fix the exhaust on that gold wing. Trying to, I've been working on, um, Picked up a, a Honda Accord hybrid. Yeah. Uh, Shan's Volkswagen is officially, it needs to go away. It, <laughs> it's, oh, it's, wow. it's bad. Check engine light comes on, it stalls randomly. And that means she loses power brakes and power steering and oh, you know, almost gosh. getting into accidents and stuff like that. So, you know, with the kid, I'm just like, well, this is why I got a third vehicle because I had a feeling that the Volkswagen wasn't going to hold up. Right. So, um, picked up this Honda Accord hybrid, you know, it has no rust and yeah. past inspection and needed a, uh, battery. So I put a new hybrid battery in and it's funny because oh, wow. when you, you take the hybrid battery apart and it says right on the box, it's like, will this doesn't say this might kill This might, you know, high sh warning, you know, high electrical shock. It says this will kill you if you go into this box. Like it's like, oh wow! It just says you will die, and I'm like, oh cool, bzz, 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 you know, <laughs> <laughs> just went right in, and uh, it was pretty easy. You know, the battery is huge, and put it in, and now it's nice. It's a v it's a V6, um, so it's kind of an interesting hybrid because you think, oh, it's a hybrid, so it gets really good gas. It, eh, it gets like 35, oh, 40 wow. miles per gallon, but it goes like stink. Because it's a V6 three liter and it's got, um, you know, 260 horsepower or whatever. Wow. And like 300 something foot pounds of torque with an electric motor. So just zero to 60s and like the high fives. So I it's need that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, but it gets good gas. That's the reason why I got it. Wasn't because I was looking for it to go like stink. In fact, I was hoping it would get good gas. And I'm like, why isn't this thing getting good gas? And then right. I'm like, I'm okay because they put a huge V6 in it. Oh wow. But yeah, it's it's that's what I've been working on, keeping that on the road and you know, making sure that gets good gas and and it and it's been good. Um just uh working on you know, I got the monkey back. I let a buddy borrow it and then um I got it back. I gotta figure out what I'm doing with that. I've got too many bikes right now, you know, like yeah. I'm just sitting on the CM185 and, you know, the GS1000 and the Bonneville, the Ninja, the wow. Monkey, the Goldwing. So they're six. Yeah. You know, and I'm, I'm riding mo mainly the Goldwing like all the time. Like that's my go-to. I probably ride that a few times a week. This past Sunday, I did about 150 miles on it. Oh, wow. Yeah. Went up to Burlington and went, came back. So. It was a long ride, but it was nice. It was just nice to go for a ride, you know. And the gold wigs yeah. just, it soaks it up until the exhaust blew out. And then it was like, oh, God. <laughs> like I took the pipes off and there's like a hole this big in the muffler. And then they had like, I think you, you've you probably seen it on like some of the, like the, the haunted twins. Like they, they have those bread box things that combine the two pipes into this, into this like box. And then mm -hmm. they have two pipes to go out to the mufflers. Yeah. Well, I did that with the Goldwing too, and there's a catalytic catalytic converter in there. Pretty sure that's right. what got clogged and blew out there too. 
because the thing burns oil and is it smokes a lot, but it's fine. It can do that. It's got it's old and has like seventy seven thousand miles. Um, would but, that pass inspection if you justified that and bypassed it? Would yeah, they know it should be fine. Now, okay. no, with I the catalyzers for something. I didn't know if they look for it or not. Not in Vermont. I I don't even have my cats. I never. Ha- I haven't had cats on the T one twenty. I took the cat off when I first got it, and it pa- it's passed every every year. It's yeah. weird. They don't look for. They only look to see if you're throwing a check engine light. Oh wow! So if you're throwing a check engine light, they won't pass it. But if it doesn't throw a check engine light, it passes. Yeah. I don't know if I should say that out loud or not, but that's my how it works. So old. My bikes are so old they they barely throw a light, let alone a check engine. Light. That's right. They barely they barely have <laughs> enough t- voltage to t- make a twelve le- volt light bulb turn on. A couple of times I took the six fifty out. It's like the right turn signal it either works or it doesn't work, and then all of a sudden it just starts working. And I I've messed with the turn signals on a thing ever since I got it. I'm so frustrated. I just like it's good. Yep. I had a guy pass me on the windy, narrow road, you know, that I ride on my 40 mile loop that I do. I didn't look in my rear mirror. I didn't see anybody. And this crotch rocket went past me. And I'm telling you what, I thought a bear came out of the woods and was attacking me. That's how the growl was when it went past. Really? And it was enough that I just kind of wiggled like, you know, Pee Wee Herman on a motorcycle going up the road. I'm like, what an idiot. And it was, you know, two, it was a, a, a single lane road. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Two lane road. And it was double yellow line with curves. He blew past me. I couldn't believe how fast he went past me. And uh, that's crazy. Yeah. So that was a good scare while I'm looking for deer that are going to jump out in front of me at any minute, you know? Right. Yep. So, yep. But yeah, yeah, there, there, there are some, Silly people out there, that's for sure. Yeah. 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 So I did um I did do that 12 volt conversion on that Honda CM 185. That was an interesting get up. I um because those are all six volt, all the twin stars, you know. All Is the there old... a, a like a coil pack you put in on the the CDI part or no? What it's do you on... do? <laughs> so I'm running, still running the points. Okay. But you replace um, your your coil with a Rebel 250 coil. Boop, put that on. And then new plugs that work with the new voltage or ohmage or whatever, because the ohmage is different. So you will lose spark with your stock six volt start spark plug. So you put Rebel 250 spark plugs in. Oh, wow. Yep. And then all you do is, so there's the regulator rectifier. It's like the little black box for the six volt. Unhook that. It's like a four pin clip and then clip in. You can just order it. I think it was like, I want to say it was relatively inexpensive, like 40 or $50. It's just a right. It's an R and R that just plugs right in. It runs off the old statter and just converts to 12 volt. It runs like 13 point one to the poles then you just put a 12 volt battery in and just change all everything out to 12 volt you know your lights and your your horn and the switches are fine because the switches don't care what voltage it is right and it and the starter is technically good to 36 volts but it's set up for six so you put it on the 12 it's like and it just <laughs> the engine's like and it just starts right <laughs> You know? It's like you just point at the starter and it it's starts. like, <laughs> so it runs great. It starts great. And it, it definitely made a difference in the amount of power it has. Right. Um, it was kind of like, you know, it would get up to like 50, 55, really. And it's like, oh, and, but now it just like goes right up to 60, 65. Wow. Yeah. Starts right. And it it's. It's an, it's an it's been an interesting project. It's one of those it's one of those projects like when you fix something, something else like breaks. It's stupid. Like okay, get this. I did the carburetor on it. You know, you do the carburetor. It's been sitting for X amount of years. You got to do the carburetor. 
So I pulled the carburetor out, cleaned it all up, got it to run, messed with the idle adjustment. Everything worked great. Right off the kick it, boom, it would fire right up. Great, beautiful. Go out the next morning. I'm going for a ride, come back, go back, come out the next morning to just start it up. Crank, 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 nothing. Pull the choke, crank, 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 nothing. I'm like, what is going on? And the gas is just coming out of the, the tailpipes. Oh. I'm like, what the hell is going on? So I go look and I'm like, what is going on? I look down, never seen this, John. And I don't know if you've seen this. The idle, the fuel mixture, idle, like the fuel mixture for the, 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 the fuel, the idle jet. Right. That had fallen out. Oh, wow. So that needle and spring were just sitting on top of the engine. So it was just blowing, letting f- fuel just flow into the end, into the engine. So it wasn't starting because it was flooding. So I took the plugs out, did the, let it, let the gas fly everywhere. You know, hope the spark plugs don't ignite it. You know, oh my gosh. And then put it back together and, and it was fine. And then use some she'll Loctite. Fire. Yeah. She'll, she'll fire. She'll, she'll catch fire. on fire. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, that's yeah. why you should have a GoPro running 24 <laughs> seven. Yeah, I know. I really should. I should. Yeah, man. So that's, I don't know. It's still, it cracks me up. I don't know how many times we've done it, but it's still exciting the first time it starts up and you've done something and it works on something old that somebody didn't want or parked it. Yep. And uh, so it's pretty rewarding. Yeah. Well, that was the thing. It's like I did all that work on, on the, on the CM 185 and I'm like, it's a nice little rig. Like what, what's going on? And then all of a sudden I shift it and here the Kickstarter never worked. And the, the components that would cause the Kickstarter, like that spring would broke it. Yeah. So it was just rattling off the primary. So oh, wow. Take that out, take the Kickstarter out, take the whole mechanics and put everything back together. So I no longer have kickstart, but it doesn't rattle at all. Right. And I'm like, okay, now let's roll. Get on the bike smooth oh now i start rolling and i start hammering it hit second gear third gear i'm like okay i'm revving up but i'm not going anywhere clutches smoked oh, so i pull man. it out pull the basket pull the cat because that's where the, the kick start was so pull that right. freaking cover off again and sure enough the uh the clutches are like the friction discs are like flat even and the springs like are you know you could i can go like this with them and oh, and and you know and the pressure plates were you know the plates contact plates were like smooth glazed over right so i took a i took a gamble and i'm like all right so i'm just gonna order a two i'm gonna order a rebel 250 clutch and see if i can't get it to work and sure enough like the 250 has two extra plates so you just take out those plates and then you right. use the top rebel spring retainer retainer push thing you know retainer for the top yeah. of the basket and you build the clutch pack make sure it all fits and then you put it back on it's just a c-clip that holds the clutch together on that little thing and then bolts it together and it works great now rebel craig 50 craig would ask you did you pre-soak your fiber disc before you put it back together yes i did okay i did and you know i've never heard and of I made that sure until it's 5w30 no i'm kidding yeah right <laughs> wait a minute six people just made a comment hold on yeah that's right that's right yeah. i've never heard of that until craig told me that years ago did you pre-soak those i'm like you've got oil in a crankcase i don't understand you can't do that so right because once he mentioned it then i started something. seeing people do it so uh he used to argue whether it should soak overnight or soak for 20 minutes, but still. It, it's, they soaked for about as long as it took me to take that case off. That side cover off. So about 10 <laughs> minutes. I was like. <laughs> yeah, but I can't do anything without hearing him behind me. So I have to do it. So. Yeah. Uh, I've, I've done them before. And, you know, you're supposed to soak them. So. Yeah. It makes sense when you think about it. I've just never heard of it before no it makes perfect sense you, you it's a great way to burn a clutch up when you just put in yeah but i also could never afford brand new fiber plates 
disc plates when I was a kid on my dirt bike. So everything was used anyway. So that was already great. Right. So you're so. like just looking through all the fibers. You're like, that one I still can see grooves. That yeah. one's good. That one flat. Nope. Yeah. Uh, well, I kind of see them. You know, it's like it's like you're trying to build the most clearance, you know, most uh clearance, yeah. So funny. Well, the 850 triple one I got at the clutch was bad in it, and I ended up dropping the inspection plate on the bottom mm -hmm. by the oil filter, um, even underneath that and cleaning all that out because there was just fiber material all over the place in there. Someone just smoked so, the clutch out of it. Yeah. 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 So I don't know. Yeah, I think it's like go ahead. No, that's why I got it so cheap because he didn't know what it was and thought it was the transmission when it was just the clutch. So, but still. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's why I think I got that that rep that cm 185 for so stinking cheap because the guy's like oh it would run it'll run if you clean the carb it'll run <laughs> yeah it ran but it didn't go anywhere and it was making a right. god awful noise and then i was like looking at the kickstarter and it's just like doing one of these like the kickstarter's like going like this you know <laughs> i'm like that ain't good <laughs> there's yeah. something wrong with the kickstart <laughs> yeah Oh That's man. Something else. Uh, I think I told that story before is that I, I don't know if I did or not in episode one or two, but the neighbor got a the first two stroke dirt bike in the neighborhood. We all had XR seventy fives and he came in with a YZ eighty two stroke and he rode it up the street and he hit second or third gear and it was like real loud. And I said, What is that? And he said, That's the power band. That's the power <laughs> <laughs> Turned out it was the clutch. <laughs> so yeah it was pretty yeah. hilarious i and i'm wondering if the dealer that he bought it from told him that because he bought it used i thought did they sell it to him and told him that was a power band yeah so yeah it's supposed to accelerate not just make noise that's right oh, that's man. right that's so funny yeah some of the things you find on these bikes you know it makes you go what were these guys thinking you know right like the the 1000 like the gs like i i know the guy had great intentions and i think he i think part of the reason he was getting rid of it was he was over his head because right there was the electrical system for one was totally whacked it's like i don't know if he did it but the the turn signal relay had a h4 headlight plug in there i don't know why and it was yeah. ground there was a ground going gra a ground red wire ground going from the frame First. to that h4 i don't know and, it, and a relay i've never seen before wrapped in duct tape it was it was a it was a mess so you know it, it's just like and he's like oh yeah i ride this thing around all the time and i'm like okay and then i rode it and i went to use the front brake and it's like right to the bar nothing's happening <laughs> <laughs> nothing i'm like man okay and then you know the rear is like super spongy too so i yeah. was like this is how you die <laughs> dude <laughs> i was gonna say that sounded like the episode of bikes and beards where the guy buys bikes at dealerships that brand new in a crate that hasn't been ran in 40 years and then he tries to ride them home and they all seem to have bad brakes on them he's like yeah. i don't need a front brake you know and he does 500 miles home with it so yeah i mean you could do it like i rode home and luckily with the 1000 that the engine the engine braking is just awesome yeah but, you know once i got it set got the carbs off cleaned them put them on i went with that deklavik four to one uh exhaust on it but on it the runs, gs yeah oh, oh man it sounds so good it's i just, bet it's like the sr but cooler <laughs> <laughs> But the SR's got a chain. <laughs> That's right. No, the SR is always cooler because it's got a chain. The yeah. shaft puts it down, down that <laughs> old man notch. <laughs> I want one of those exhausts for that SR so bad, but it's hard to let go of three fifty, four hundred dollars on it. Right. So yeah, but it's yeah. got probably equal to a, a Mac exhaust header right now. So mm -hmm. it's not like it would be louder. It just sound different well that was the thing like the bike ran horribly like it was running well but it wasn't running good because it had like those four to two side yeah. sweep what are the, you know what i'm talking about i don't know yeah. i guess back in the 80s it was a big thing to put like the two to it was like four to two 
side right. that open exhaust and it sounded horrible and it had holes all in it and it was running hmm. horrible i'm like no we gotta get this puppy running right you know right. four to one's the way to go or a stock exhaust but that they're on obtainium you can't find a stock exhaust for a, an old gs anymore that's right in good condition anyways i thought about getting one for the triple uh even though it's overkill but my stock exhaust is in such good shape i thought could i get anything for that you know because they're usually rusted out to put it toward the other exhaust but then i went ah, the heck with it well don't so. you want to you want to try that 900 triple triumph exhaust that i have oh that's right we were talking about that isn't that weird that you can put the carbs from a triumph and an exhaust from a triumph on I think that it's, old it's Yamaha. the spacing it just happened to be the spacing of the cylinders interesting yeah yeah because that's a nice exhaust like they did a pretty good job designing that so it goes three and then there's two pipes yeah that go from the center cylinder that cross over to the outer cylinders and then there's another crossover so it like they they're there's really good scavenging off that stock pipe yeah and it's pretty i think it would work just fine i mean you'd probably have to modify mounts and stuff of course but yeah it's there it's not doing anything in my shed it's funny on the group you mentioned triumph carburetors and there's 25 comments how'd you do it what'd you do how much was it where'd you find them and a lot of the guys are over in uk and uh right. but and they're a little more readily available but apparently there's different ones i think ours i should say not mine is uh keenan wasn't it i don't think they were mccoonies and uh so yeah they're i i don't i don't you're right i don't think they're mccoonies but they're I, yeah they're right. they're probably keenan or kine or whatever you want to call them right so yeah i mean no. big big huge difference i wish sam and dave you know could ride it sometime to see the difference because they've got you know there's 17 triples there and yep and and dave loves the what's he call them mk2 mccoonies that it's like second generation you know, mm-hmm. and then when they came out with the Hitachis at the end, everybody hates those. Yeah, I, I, it's so weird that they put those on the on there. It's yeah. almost like they just want they just kind of like gave up on the model and just like just put the cheapest thing we can find on them. Right. Well, I guess you know the blue one that I sold Sam and he's got it looking really cool with the silver paint job and stuff. I probably shouldn't call him out on this, but he made a comment about 110 miles an hour on it the other day, going up one some windy road in new york to get from his place to dave's and i was like there is no way <laughs> yeah that's a lie <laughs> yeah yeah no i mean i believe he would do it because he's a wild man but um yeah i just on on a bike that old or whatever i just can't believe it but he yeah. just said it's incredible you know to to ride this thing back from ithaca to poughkeepsie where he goes so I'm like yeah. good for you it is pretty it well i have to say though like riding the riding the gs around it's kind of silly how fast they made motorcycles back in the late 70s yeah. early 80s and how freaking bad they stopped right. like you can't shed speed you can get speed build speed right. like that gs 100 miles an hour no problem like it's a yeah. 140 mile per hour motorcycle i don't doubt that right but those brakes are good past 80. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Right. You don't want to be running. You don't want to use those brakes much past 80 miles an hour. That's right. You know? Oh, Man. my Lord. What a death trap. You know, yeah. at least the handle's good. It doesn't have any of those, like, frame flex problems. Those GSs were pretty pretty stout. They did a good job right. with the frames. But. It's weird to switch back and forth between the Yamaha and the Kawasaki when you park one and you get on the other for a reason to go over and you know, mm-hmm. Craig hated the handling on that SR. He just said it, he never did like it from the day he bought it. And I do notice something different when I'm riding the triple and then I get on the 650. It does feel rigid and kind of mm-hmm. harsh, you know, going in turns and stuff like that. But it does have really good brakes. But the triple has decent brakes for a triple. Mm-hmm. You know, the the black one we had, it had terrible brakes. It was yep. like mushy. And, yep. uh so even with the stainless lines, I think we put stainless lines on that, right? Yeah. It just was yeah. like it's yeah. yeah. The GS is like that. I have the stainless lines on it. You just you reef it. And right. it's not slowing down very well. 
And I guess I don't notice it because I don't ride modern stuff like you, so I don't really have anything to compare yeah. it to. But um, it says a guy that's, I mean, I'm putting most of my miles on an 88 Goldwing. <laughs> I'm in, in the past. <laughs> so, man. Yeah. That's something else. Well, yeah. I guess we've yacked enough. Yeah, it's probably probably time to, uh, you know, uh, tie this one off and. Yeah, thanks for tuning in. And if you like what you hear, you know, just keep an eye on the YouTube channel or on uh, Buzzsprout. That's where we're got our podcast hosted. And you can find us on other places that you like your podcasts. So uh, thanks for tuning in. And uh, we'll talk to you later. John, you have a good night. You too. Thank you. Yeah. See ya. See ya.